And here we are, and as you can see, once again I've taken the machine apart. The view meters are halfway out, and the switches are taken out. Those are all down here. As you can see, it's all sitting on this assembly. And, uh, yes, to clean the switches I've used the evil spray can. Once again, the vicious spray can. So I didn't do it up to uh, some people's standards who like to uh, take the switches all apart and uh, clean every little contact manually. But, uh, you know, doing that would take forever. I mean, just, just getting those switches out of here would take a century. So, uh, it's, it's just not realistic to do that, you know? I mean, you can tell me a lot, but uh, you're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, this, the front part cannot be taken off, uh, because uh, it's actually... All the all of these jacks are mounted on there. All of these potentiometers are mounted on there. So uh, I had to uh, kind of dig into there and uh, take out the screws and pull uh, this assembly out towards the bottom. Had to take out the the back part of the chassis once again to uh, be able to uh, get it out, get enough space. But um, there it is. Cleaned the switches as good as I could. Spray can uh, had just enough content left to do that. Now I have to get a new one. So, uh, well, there you can see, you can't really see where the switches are. You can see a bunch of uh, spark killer capacitors and a relay down there somewhere. But uh, anyway, there it is. Now I want to go ahead and uh, put this back together and uh, hopefully it's going to work then. Having the switches out is going to be pretty convenient because as you can see there is quite a bit of dirt around uh, these holes. And now with the switches all taken out I can just go over there and uh, don't have to work my way around the switches. And here we are a little bit later. And I know this is hard to believe for all the people who love to take switches apart. But uh, I actually got the switches back into a perfectly working condition. So uh, that problem is fixed as well. Now here is another thing I just uh, checked. You can see right there this circuit board. Right down there you might be able to see these circuit traces are looking a little bit corroded. Um, so I thought there might be a bad capacitor sitting there, so just took that circuit board out. Well, it turns out there is a relay sitting right there, and a resistor sitting right there, so uh, that's, not, uh, that's not a problem at all. So I just want to go ahead and redo those soldering joints and uh, call it good. So uh, that's that. These, uh, these motor run capacitors, this machine has three motor run capacitors. Those might need to be replaced at some point. But um, aside from that, I'm actually pretty optimistic that uh, the unit is uh, going to work for the next couple of decades. Might need some new capacitors in 10 or 20 years or so. And just to prove that the capacitors are actually quite good, here is something that I just found out, which uh, is actually quite scary. As you can see, the machine is turned on, the view meters are lit up. Now I want to go ahead and turn the power off. Power is off, view meters are dark, as you can see. Now I want to go ahead and press play. Let's see what happens. Did you hear that? The electronics were actually activating and uh, getting ready to uh, play back, uh, to get into the playback mode, and you could also hear some of the solenoids clicking. So uh, <laughs> there is that much energy left in the machine when you turn it off. So uh, and uh, it does take a lot of energy to uh, get those solenoids to do something. So the power supplies are definitely good. Well, here is a bit of an annoying thing. I was, uh, ever since I got this unit, I was wondering about how cheap 
the wooden side panels looked. I mean, it was it was obviously fake wood, but it was done so terribly. I mean, back in the days, I would have refused to pay money for that. Uh, well, I now decided to go ahead and investigate that problem a little bit. As I found out, it's just an adhesive plastic foil, and it wasn't Tiak who put this on. It was the previous owners, because as you can see, at some point, the original wooden side parts were painted black. How annoying. How annoying. As you can see, it's black. As you can see, they did a terrible job doing that because the adhesive foil is actually pulling the, the black color right off. So, um, I guess I'll go ahead and ask my uncle, uh, he is a carpenter, uh, what, you, what, what, is, what you could possibly do about that. Um, because, you know, with the color coming off like this, I guess the original finish is all intact and was just painted over with this garbage. So maybe there is some kind of a vicious chemical uh, thing that, uh, that uh, could be able to get this off. Because I would like to get the original finish back instead of this uh, cheap-looking adhesive foil. So, anyway... Pulled this off in an, in an unobvious corner. When it's standing on the shelf, you won't be able to notice that. But um, So I, I could leave it this way if I wanted to, but um, anyway, that is that. This is, by the way, how the machine looks with the side panels taken off. Yep, as you can see, you can't turn them off. You, t you can't take them off. Uh, so that's probably why one of the owners decided to paint this black because they wanted the machine to look a little bit more modern They just couldn't take those off like uh, like it was possible with other machines You can you can see quite nicely how the how the chassis was designed right there Revox had a similar setup by the way now you can see those wire wound resistors That uh, I wanted to clean so now going to do that, going to clean, uh, clean the resistors, going to clean the motors, going to clean the solenoids, everything that gets warm and uh, could possibly start stinking. And uh, this thing, I guess I'll just have to put it back on for right now, but um, something definitely needs to be done about that. I mean, here is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is just looking cheap. This is coming off all over the place. Not good. Well, I guess you're able to tell that um, I have now done most of the uh, necessary cleaning in this machine. So uh, now I can actually finally go ahead and put this back together. There was a lot of dust in this machine. I don't know. I don't know if most of the dust is uh, is like um, coming from uh, from the brakes. Like you can see, there are felt pads. I don't know if that dust is uh, is just getting rubbed off from those felt pads, or if it really just uh, got into this machine over time. Uh, if that is the case, uh, that's really amazing. This must have been uh, stored in a very very dusty environment if that uh, if that was true now here is something I forgot to show you they actually do give you a printed uh, plan of uh, what can be found on the bottom of the machine so uh, you can actually see that's for example playback equalization bias trap playback calibration playback Monitor calibration probably various stuff there. There is the bias. I don't know what the dummy coil is good for, and if it's only a dummy, why do you, why would you want to adjust it? But uh, you can see that's the layout. So there is the bias adjustment, for example. So uh, that has all been done quite nicely. Uh, especially, for example, compared to the Akai 4000DS, 
where adjusting the bias requires a, um, a connection to a certain test point, which uh, is simply impossible to find. Let me put it that way. So, um, kind of nice. And as you can see, that's for the A2300SX and the A3300SX which, um, once again, the only difference between the two is that the 3300SX uh, supports the big studio size reels. have uh, some other reel-to-reels listed there. There is nothing. And that's the that's the Dolby version, SD. So, as you can see down in here, we have uh, the Dolby unit instead of uh, playback line amp and record amp. Must be sitting right in the middle of there. Kind of interesting to see. And there it is, all back together, as you can see. I, by the way, decided to do nothing about those uh, side panels for right now. The plastic foil on there, it does look kind of cheap and it's coming off everywhere like down there, but uh, it's definitely better than uh, messing up the side panels in some kind of way. So, uh, anyway, now it's basically time to uh, bring it back over into my room and then, finally, get it hooked up in the main stereo system. <laughs> 